everybody, welcome back to my third installment of What Am I Backing on Kickstarter. I have 10 games for you today. I've also got my computer right here so I can take a look at it, get through it as quickly as possible, and show you a couple of the images that Kickstarter has shared with me as a backer and on the campaign page. I also will try to provide any information available for late pledges and things like that. So keep your eye peeled for that on the screen, but also take a look in the description below and you'll see a link to all the Kickstarter campaigns that I've mentioned here in this video. All right, so the first game that I'm going to talk about is called Monstrosity. And this is the Unusual Suspects Edition. Now, the only reason I'm backing this on Kickstarter is because I don't have the base game Monstrosity. And this came up and it's in partnership or collaboration with Shut Up and Sit Down. And it just looks really fun. And I know about the game. I just don't have a copy of it. A fellow educator in one of my alliances for using games in the classroom uh, talks about using this game a lot and so I like what Dustin says about this game and how interesting and unique it is. There's a lot of active listening, there's descriptive um, communication with your how you describe what you're looking at as the monster and then everybody else gets to essentially sketch out what they think the person is describing and then everybody's gonna try to figure out okay who is the closest to the actual drawing of the monsters these monsters are incredibly unique and interesting and strange so I think there's just a lot here with this um, particular game, but I'm just glad that I finally am going to get a copy of it in some way or another. So Monstrosity I hope to use um, in the classroom perhaps, but also just whenever I'm hanging out with my friends and we're kind of in a really casual situation because it seems like an incredibly fun and flavorful game. As many of you know, I love a good puzzle. Um, I love figuring things out and I really like doing it with the team. So the next game that I'm going to talk about is called Paint the Roses, and it's a cooperative puzzle game in Wonderland. So it's got the Alice in Wonderland theme, and there is this really fun kind of logical deduction to the puzzles that you have to solve each round as you place tiles and gather cubes. And so I think this looks particularly well made. It is a really strong design, and I love the cooperative nature of it. It seems like, um, as, as it says here, the higher you score, the angrier and faster the queen gets, and the uh, difficulty adjusts with no additional setup or change needed for the players. And so I think that's really cool how the game kind of works with you. I just think it looks incredibly cool. So I, I love the puzzly nature of it. And again, I love the cooperation. So for me, I think this is going to be a real, a real hit. And hopefully I'll be able to paint the minis. Um, the minis look really cool. And they're really just the queen, the gardeners, and um, the white rabbit. It doesn't seem like there's much. But I do know with all of the emails I've been getting through the campaign, they've been adding more and more characters and more cards. And so it's an incredibly popular campaign. And so I think there's going to be a lot of bonuses that get added to this game. Um, when it comes to characters and kind of puzzles and perhaps minis. Um, so that's kind of cool. When you have a really popular game on Kickstarter, those breakthroughs, um, when you get the threshold of how many um, you know people have backed it, that could really be um, huge. So that's, that's a nice boon um, and a nice you know bonus to backing Paint the Roses. So another game that I backed um, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is because it's from the same designers as Canvas. You can see Canvas kind of right back there. Hopefully you can see just a little bit of it. Um, but Canvas is a fantastic game, and it's called Don't Go In There. So this game um, is you essentially going into this haunted house, and you're super curious, and you have to undo this curse to escape. It seems really cool because the box actually unfolds into a dice tower. Very cool. I like that. Even if it's a basic dice tower, I think it's so fun. So you've got several challenges that you've got to overcome. It says it's easy to learn and it's 30 minutes of what they call press your luck set destruction. How does that not sound like the coolest thing? So I'm like all on board. Um, the cards are haunted. You've got to grab the right ones and then get out with them. 
it just seems really fun and super highly thematic. Maybe it will become a new kind of holiday during the Halloween season, a holiday game that I can play with my friends. I have one friend in particular who always wants to play a whole bunch of kind of spooky themed games every year. And so that would be really fun to bring Don't Go In There um, to our kind of Halloween gaming session. The next game that I backed is called Verdant. And it's from the team that brought us Calico and Cascadia. And those are games that just keep coming up. They keep coming out on the table too. I played Cascadia at Board Game Geek Con this year and we have a copy of it. I backed that on Kickstarter. We got Calico and just loved it and played it um, several times. And this looks like a really fun, puzzly, spatial board game. And the theme of it is Houseplant collection and care. So you've got these really cute little pieces that look like little plants and trees and all sorts of fun thematic cards. Yeah, I think this is looking, this just looks really fun. So it's one to five players, about 30 to 45 minutes. You're trying to create the coziest space. Kind of sounds like Calico, right? You're creating the coziest little place for your cats. Um, you've got multi-layered spatial puzzles. You've got to position these plants so they receive the most light or the suitable light for what kind of plant they are. I mean, you're trying to create this beautiful collection of flowers and plants. So yes, for the puzzling nature, the bits and pieces just look super. They look stellar. The artwork on this is super strong. So um, yes to a game that kind of reminds me of Cascadia and Calico. I mean, much like the last game, the designers of Canvas, there's just something with knowing what these creators and these artists have already put out and liking it and wanting to invest in them in future Kickstarter campaigns. I think that's great. The next game I backed is called Dog Park and it's a beautiful board game about walking dogs. Uh, yeah, I love dogs and I love board games about dogs. And years ago, I mean three or four years ago, I designed a couple board games that were dog themed myself. And I, it's because I thought there just weren't enough dog games out there. There's a lot of cat games, but there's not a lot of dog games. So when I saw this, I was just so thrilled. One to four players, 40 to 80 minutes, there are 221 unique dogs in this game, and essentially what it is, is you collecting and walking all of your favorite dogs in this um, board game that's really card driven. And I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so for me, it's huge on theme, and it just is really great. And I, I have to say that the campaign has been very delightful. I love getting all the emails from them. I love hearing all the facts about the dogs. I love all the polls that they've run. And so I have to say kudos to the campaign for how well they ran it and for all the things they're considering. The little um, tokens that are used for the dog biscuits and the sticks and the toys and stuff. I mean, come on. They're, they're the cutest things you've ever seen. You get, you get little little victory point pawpaws whenever they go for walks and, and, and you are nice to them and it's just delightful. So yes, yes. Um, I'm really excited for Dog Park. I think it's going to be great. And one to four players again, I don't know, just seems like insanely right up my alley. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so moving on, I've got a game called Unsurmountable. It's a solo game by Scott Alms, and it is Same Guy, Food Chain Island, and Ugly Griffin Inn. Scott Alms, I like these games, and I like what he does. So I just saw him as a designer, knowing it's probably a pocket um, solo game. I was just almost clicking pledge before I even read anything about the campaign. Um, but it says here that you're climbing a mountain, anything can happen, the paths twist and shift and it seems like you're trying to find your way up to the top. You're unprepared and, and you're overconfident, so do you have what it takes to um, mount the unsurmountable? So it's these rocky slopes, you're playing this with just cards, it's part of the Simply Solo line. Um, yeah. One player only, light on rules, big on replayability. So I think the theme looks really strong here. I'm looking forward to what this solo card game offers. And of course, yay for Scott Alms. I'm, I'm just like really excited. The next game that I backed is called Earth Rising, 
20 years to transform our world. So this is a cooperative board game about saving the world, transforming society, and creating a sustainable future in 20 years. I like the scale of players, one to six. I like that it's cooperative, and I like that it's gonna be a hardier game. It says 90 to 120 minutes. So I think that sounds like you're kind of sitting down for a little bit longer than just that half hour, 45 minute game. And so I think that sounds really, really cool. You want to clean up and mitigate the damage already done. You want to challenge existing practices and, and you know look at alternatives that could hopefully help better the future. Um, but all the actions that you choose shape that future. And I feel like that to me is just a really a gamified way of looking at taking care of climate change and taking care of the environment and taking care of our future as humankind. I think it's great that you have, um, uh, that, that there's an educational pack here that you can essentially purchase, which gives you teaching supplements, um, like lesson plans and source material and things like that. There are all these different characters you can play that obviously have different MO, um, climatologist, ecologist, activist, grassroots politician, innovator, eco-investor. It sounds really interesting and dynamic and of course of the times. So I'm really looking forward to getting my copy of Earth Rising. The next game is the Artemis Odyssey. I really enjoyed the Artemis Project, which is a standalone strategy game. I really, really liked it. And this is a totally standalone sequel to the Artemis Project. It's one to five players. So with the Artemis Odyssey, it says you've got a faction of trailblazers that will cross the vast emptiness of interstellar space to discover systems full of uninhabited planets. Wow, okay, Artemis Project, you're just like, on Europa and you go it's like you have um, above ground and below ground and that seems really focused on Europa so different story here you got sustainable colonies productive factories installed and terraformers um, yeah okay cool very cool I like the theme I like the theme a lot um, it says here one to five players 45 minutes I think the reason this says 45 minutes is because they've improved and streamlined gameplay for quicker smoother experience it seems like the designers have taken the first game and kind of made an easier different kind of game to play that's kind of in the same world with some of the same features so maybe it is 45 minutes long that's cool and it seems like playing cards is a big part of the challenge and then of course uh, anticipating your opponents and what they're going to do is part of the game too. Ah, oh, looks so cool. High on theme, looks like a really great light strategy game. Yeah, maybe a light medium, we'll see. Okay, so this next one is called The Spill and it's about managing an oil spill and rescuing sea life in a suspenseful cooperative game. The game plays one to four players and it lasts about 50, maybe 60 minutes long. And for me, I think the thing that really kind of attracted me, there is this rig that's kind of in the center of the board and it's essentially a four-way dice tower. And I like that. I love dice towers. I love dice towers so much. And so you drop the dice down in this feature and it drops into four different quadrants. And so that to me is just super, super cool. Um, it says that it's kind of on the edge of your seat excitement all the way to the end. I mean, obviously with the dice tower, you're going to have dice in the game. That looks fantastic. It seems like your dice go on your player board and everybody's got a different role. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of roles here. Meteorologist, officer, sea captain, marine vet, uh, marine biologist, and so forth. There's just a handful. There's eight of them. I'm excited. I think it looks great. Um, there are apparently eight variable win condition cards, so there are gradations to winning and um, different ways of winning the game. And again, I really like that we're trying to stop this oil spill um, and uh, mitigate the damage due uh, to the ocean. Um, yes, very, very cool. All right, lastly, I want to uh, get my copy of Villagers Shifting Seasons. Um, this is a, a module expansion for villagers, which I did not get. So what I did in this is I backed the game, but then I also backed the shifting seasons. And so it was a way for me to get the original game. I did not um, really hear about or know about this particular game when it first came out, but after looking at the cards, the gameplay, and just 
the way this game works, I got really excited about it. So 1 to 5 players, 30 to 60 minutes to play. Um, it says the game itself is a bright and breezy affair where players draft from a changing pool of beautifully illustrated villager cards with the aim of building the most prosperous village by the end of the game. Very cool. There's like this collective area and you're taking those and putting them in your own area. Um, you got these, as they say here, a lovable cast of characters, many paths to victory. That's the one thing I like about Nidavalier. There are so many different ways to get victory points, kind of like a point salad way of, of getting points. Um, ease of teaching, great production value. Uh, it should be hopefully a game that comes back to the table again and again. And now with the shifting seasons, I can add this really cool multi-module expansion to the base game and it looks really charming it just looks charming and I'm I'm a I'm a sucker for charm <laughs> I'm a sucker for great artwork too so I am really really thrilled about these Kickstarter games that I have backed and hopefully we'll be getting receiving these uh, in the start and then all throughout 2022 so when I get these games in I will do my best to share my reaction and my take on them because I think that this is just a really great way to you know see different games learn about new designers and really support people that are doing something uh, amazing and fantastic and you want to essentially value that um, you know their time and their effort and their energy and you want to play their game and so Kickstarters are a great way to do that um, so yeah thanks for joining me for this um, update on the latest Kickstarter campaigns that I'm backing and why so let me know in the comments below and again don't forget to check that description I'm going to tell you if you can do a late backer if you can pre-order if you can go to their website and you can join it because all of these Kickstarter campaigns are technically closed um, but they might allow you to do those options which means that you can actually jump into the campaign and get their game uh, even if it's just a little bit later than um, Kickstarter backers but Check it out, and I will see you next time.